The traditional greeting. It means victory to be him. Hmm? Beam, beam. 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 It's a name. His name. Uh, 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 Dr. Ambedkar's name was Dr. Bimrao Ramji Ambedkar. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, Beam is a short and very respectful but very affectionate way people address him. Yeah. Uh, and it's um, a, a way in which we share our commitment to creating a, a just society on the basis of the Buddha Dhamma. So let's start by chanting the refuges and precepts together. Because that's what we all have in common. No matter what our tradition, no matter what our background, we all go for refuge to the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha. And, and that's what unites us. That's what unites us. Unite us. And then we'll chant the, uh, the mantra of the Bodhisattva Avalokiteshvara. Because that's very closely associated with Dr. Ambedkar. He himself recited that mantra every day. Mm. And we know that all of you will feel very close to that mantra. Mm. <laughs> Namo tassa bhagavato arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Buddham Saranam Gachami Dhamam Saranam Gachami Sangham Saranam Gachami Dutiyam Pi Buddham Saranam Gachami Dutiyam Pi Dhammam Saranam Gachami Dutiyam Pi Sangham Saranam Gachami Tatiyam Pi Buddham Saranam Gachami Tatiyam Pi Dhammam Saranam Gachami Tatiyam Pi Sangham Saranam Gachami Anati Pata Leremani Sikha Sick 
of loving kindness with deeds of loving kindness i purify my body i purify my body with open handed generosity with open handed generosity i purify my body i purify my body with stillness simplicity and contentment with stillness simplicity and contentment i purify my body i purify my body with truthful communication with truthful communication i purify my speech i purify my speech with mindfulness clear and radiant with mindfulness clear and radiant i purify my mind i purify my mind om mani padme hum 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 Om Mani Padme Padme Hum Om Mani Padme Hum Om Mani Padme Hum Om Mani Padme Hum Om Mani Padme Hum 
And you'll notice that we've learnt that way of chanting the, uh, the uh, Avalokiteshvara mantra from Chinese sources. Mm. We, we try to find what is best in the Buddhist tradition for our particular needs. Uh, at the moment, we're conducting a, uh, a two-month uh, retreat here. And there are about 50 people here, all of them from India, apart from myself and a couple of others. And we're practicing the Mula Yogas, the Foundation Yogas. Yes. At the moment, we're concentrating on prostration practice and uh, Vajrasattva practice. So we require that anybody coming on this retreat had done at least 10,000 prostrations before they came here. Mm. Mm. Before they came here. Ten thousand. Very small payment, yeah. <laughs> Next time it will be more. So people are just spending the whole day prostrating. And uh, we're, we're doing the Vajrasattva practice in the morning. And I'm sure this will be familiar to all of you. So let me just say a little bit about our tradition. We, we depend upon three great figures. Three great figures. Of course, Bhagavan Buddha. He, he's the center of all our lives. <coughs> and then Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar. <coughs> and uh, Urgyan Sangharakshita. Uh, the Buddha, everybody knows. <coughs> I believe that you now already know a little bit about uh, Dr. Ambedkar. Dr. Ambedkar. Dr. Ambedkar. Dr. Ambedkar. Dr. Ambedkar. He's a very great figure in, uh, in Indian culture and in world history, really. Mm. And we, we'd like him to be much better known all over the world. because he's responsible for reviving Buddhism in India. Uh, you know that he came from a background that was previously referred to as untouchable. The very bottom of the caste system. In fact, outside the caste system. But uh, he received some help from uh, uh, some um, uh, Rajas who were sympathetic to his cause. And he received a very good education, first of all in India and then in Columbia University in New York. And then the London School of Economics in, in London. So he came back to India in the early 20th century, a highly educated man.
but he still experienced caste discrimination. People who are far less educated than him treated him as inferior. So he realized he must struggle to transform this, uh, this social system. Uh, but he realized that the, the social system was rooted in, well, drishti, in views. The Hindu religion supports, validates, and confirms caste. So after many, many years of a very hard struggle, he realized he had to do something more serious. He had to leave the Hindu religion and go to a religion that supported freedom and equality for all. Uh, he already had a deep feeling for the Buddha from very early in his life. And uh, he realized that Buddhism was the best religion for his people. And so in uh, 1956, on the 14th of October 1956, he converted to Buddhism with 400,000 of his followers. Four hundred. Four hundred. Uh, unfortunately, he died just six weeks later. But even though he was dead, uh, still many millions came into Buddhism as a result of that conversion ceremony. Uh, most of the Indians here uh, from our retreat are the, the sons or daughters or grandchildren of people who converted with Dr. Ambedkar. And that gave them a completely new life. They, the first time they saw themselves as human beings and stood up as human beings equal to anybody else. So you can imagine the feeling that my friends here have for Dr. Ambedkar. Uh, and really, we consider him a bodhisattva. Mm. He gave his life selflessly for his people. So he's an ex outstanding example to us. He's an outstanding example to us. Even to me, though I'm born from a privileged British background. He, he's an inspiration to me and to many others in our Sangha all over the world. So, 
So we can never forget him. And we will always work for his, uh, his mission. Transforming society on the basis of the Dhamma. So then our other great figure is Urgen Sangrakshita. He is an Englishman born in London in 1925. And uh, very early on he read the, the Diamond Sutra, the Vajrachedika Pragnaparamita. And he realized that he was a Buddhist. He was just 16 at the time. 16 years old, yeah. And uh, he uh, was very lucky because the British Army in the Second World War sent him to India. <laughs> but he was very disappointed to find no Buddhism in India. It died, died out a thousand years ago. Hmm? But he did, once he left the army, he made contact with Buddhists. He was ordained as a Buddhist monk. And he settled in Kalimpong, which is uh, near Darjeeling. Uh, up in uh, West Bengal. Mm. And he was very fortunate because it was a time when many great Tibetan gurus were flooding into India. And he was able to receive teachings and initiations from some of the greatest lamas of the 20th century. His, his root guru was uh, Jamyang Kensi Rinpoche. And uh, two of his main teachers were Dilgo Kensi Rinpoche and Dujon Rinpoche. And uh, Chattel Sangye Dorje, uh, Dada Rinpoche, and Kachu Rinpoche. Chattel Sangye Dorje, Dujom Rinpoche, uh, sorry, uh, Kachu. Kachu Rinpoche, and Dharu Rinpoche. Dharu Rinpoche. Dharu Rinpoche. My pronunciation is probably very bad, sorry. <laughs> Um, you'll, you'll, see, oh, you'll, you'll see them on our refuge tree here. You'll see uh, uh, Sangrakshita, Urgen Sangrakshita, with his eight teachers. He received very important teachings from a Chinese guru, uh, Mr. Chen, hmm? Yogi Chen. He lived at that time in Kalimpong. Mm. So he had this very uh, powerful experience of the, of the Tibetan tradition. Mm. But he also had some contact with Dr. Ambedkar. Dr. Ambedkar. And uh, he uh, became associated with his work of, of conversion. And importantly, he was in, and importantly, he was in, in Nagpur on the day that Dr. Ambedkar died. Uh, Sangharachita was in Nagpur, in Maharashtra, on the day that Dr. Ambedkar died.
And he addressed hundreds of thousands of people trying to give them new confidence. He was invited back to the UK, to England, uh, to help establish Buddhism there. And he uh, came to the conclusion that a new start needed to be made. And in 1967, he started the Tri Ratna Bauda uh, Mahasangha, the Tri Ratna Buddhist community. Uh, in which year? It's 67, 1967. In 1968, he started the, uh, the Tri Ratna Buddhist Order. Buddhist Order? Order. Yeah. What is that? Uh, tree, uh, uh, Buddhist Sangha. Uh, tree rat like but yeah yeah okay. so that's a community of of committed individuals who are dedicated to the the path of the buddha Those you see with this uh, case around their necks are members of the order. With the, this, this. Uh, okay. uh, the order is equally for men and women. Equally. For men and women. We all take the same ordination and follow the same precepts. And uh, we practice in accordance with the Buddha's teaching as communicated to us by Urgen Sangharakshita. As communicated by Urgen yeah. uh, he teaches. Yes. Okay. Unfortunately, uh, uh, Urgen Sangharakshita died just one year ago. And one of the things we're doing on this retreat is we're building a stupa in his memory. You'll see it just out there. Yeah. We've got some way to go, but we'll finish it in the next month. <laughs> Although later we need to finish it even better. And uh, when we started uh, 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 building the stupa, we first of all uh, buried at the, the base of the stupa a bumpa, a, a treasure vase that had been blessed by Dulgo Kansi Rinpoche. Uh, that Zanskar uh, that, uh, Rinpoche himself had given to us. So just one month ago, we had a ceremony in which we, we buried that, that vase. I, I believe that uh, Rinpoche blessed 6,200 of them. 200? Yeah. Yeah, six, Rinpoche blessed 6,200 of them before he died. Uh, Dilgo Kensi Rinpoche. The, uh, 6, yeah. the, 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 vase. the vases, yeah. So they're, they're dedicated to world peace. So we buried it chanting the mantra Sabe Sata Suki Hontu. Which means, uh, may all be, did you translate it? I don't, I don't know that much. Uh, Sabe Sata Suki Hontu, which means, may all beings be well and happy. Uh, 
uh, which goes, it's, it's, it's a mantra that the Buddha himself used. So slowly we're building it. And on the 26th of January, we're going to inter some relics of uh, Sangharakshitas. Along with a tsatsa from uh, Dada Rinpoche. Uh, Dada, Dada Rinpoche. So uh, we're, we're under the influence of these great figures. Ours is an international Sangha. About uh, a third of our Sangha members are in India. And almost all of them are immediately from those communities that were freed by Dr. Ambedkar. And uh, uh, all over the world, I think we have something like a hundred different countries represented in our order. About a hundred, maybe a hundred. Yeah. At least one from some countries. <laughs> At least one from some countries. Uh, and we, we believe that this international character is very important. Because we believe it's the Dhamma that can unite the world. Mm. And it's the Dhamma that can bring freedom and justice to all. And we're particularly concerned with reaching out to those who are less advantaged materially or socially. We're, we're, we're particularly concerned to reach those who don't have good opportunities socially or materially. Our teachings are drawn from uh, the, 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 the Buddhist teachings. Hmm? We, we, we honor very highly the, the, the Pali Canon, the Pali Sutras. sutras. But also the chief Mahayana Sutras, like uh, uh, Sudha, Sadama Pundarika Sutra and so on. And we also draw great inspiration from the, the Indo-Tibetan tradition. And uh, we've, uh, we, we practice um, Tibetan style sadhanas that come from uh, Sangharakshita's teachers. And um, we study various Tibetan texts such as the Bardo Todol. Which one? The Bardo Todol, Bardo. the so called Book of the Dead. Oh, mm. uh, so we're, 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 we're united in so far as we make no discrimination between people within our order. And we try to reach people from all different communities. We believe that going for refuge to the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha is the central and definitive act of the Buddhist life. Uh, 
and that it's, it's done again and again at every level of our, of our Dharma life. It's not just that we go for refuge when we become a Buddhist. We keep on going for refuge until the refuges are fulfilled. Refuges are fulfilled. We keep on going for refuge. We put great emphasis on community, on working together, living together. And we, 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 we put emphasis on art and culture. And we believe, particularly in India, we need to develop a new Buddhist culture. So I've given you a, a brief survey of who we are. Of, of who we are, yeah. And thank you all so much for coming. It's very important that we have these close connections with, with other Buddhists. Because we all go for refuge to the Buddha, Dharma and Sangha. And that's much more important than the, the, the different ways in which we practice that. And it's particularly important for us in India. It can be very lonely being a Buddhist in India. <laughs> uh, India is probably about 80% Hindu. About 20% uh, Muslim. There's no room for any Buddhists. <laughs> There's probably 1%, maybe. <laughs> and uh, still, most of those people are uh, not welcomed into, fully into society. Even though we know we're as good as them, they don't know we are. <laughs> So it's very important to us that our, our Buddhist brothers and sisters uh, recognize us and are with us. Huh? So thank you so much for coming. Yeah? It, it, it really is a gift to us. It really encourages us and gives us strength. So while you're here, please uh, enjoy yourselves. Uh, please uh, worship the stupa. <laughs> think of our teachers, think of some of your teachers who are connected there. Yeah. We have a beautiful Bodhi tree. Now this was planted by Ogan Sangharakshita and it's from a seed from the Bodhi tree at Bodhgaya. And of course you know that this shrine faces directly the, uh, the shrine in the Buddhist caves across the valley. Buddhist a shrine. There's some of the oldest Buddhist caves in India. They're probably cut around uh, uh, 300 BC. 200, 200. 
200, I'm corrected. <laughs> I'm exaggerating. <laughs> there was 200 BC. <laughs> we English always say the Indians exaggerate, but they say we exaggerate. <laughs> So they're very beautiful, very early caves. And they're part of the, 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 the spiritual world of this center. And very often we go to those caves to do puja. We probably go there tomorrow night on New Year's uh, Eve. Yeah. So please do uh, feel at home. And again, thank you so much for coming. This is something to you or something? We just had a lunch. So uh, there will be tea, tea if you want down in the dining hall. So there's an English and Indian tradition that we inherit from China.